Uh, when you were a child, did you enjoy your, your time at school? Well, yes and no. I remember when I went to school for the first time, I cried, I sat on the floor and cried in the reception class yeah. because it was the first time that I'd ever yeah. been away from my mother, which right. was, was a common thing yeah. in those days. Um, but during the um, holidays, I always wanted to be back at school. Yeah. Um, small primary school it was, but there were a number of incidents in my primary school that I think really yeah. have contributed to my philosophy on what I do now. Yeah. So then this primary school, was, that was up north? Where was that? Up then? north, in Milnrow, oh, yeah. near Oxshire, yeah. just off the now N62, wasn't there then. Right. Um, yeah. So that's Lancashire? Uh, Lancashire. So in Mrs Woodhead's class, that was top infants. Mm. I remember, I don't remember a lot about primary school, but yeah. I really remember we used to have to go and stand at her desk to read. Mm. Don't remember how often, yeah. but one of the things, one day, I was standing reading my book and I couldn't read a word. Mm. Well, I could read some words, but not a particular word. And I um, had to stand and she let me stand and stand and stand because I couldn't read the word twilight. And I thought, God, that's a really hard word. Mm. You know, she shouldn't be making me stand all mm. this time. And that made me quite angry. Mm. Um, Twilight's quite hard for mm. six-year-olds. Yeah, another one. Um, having to learn poetry yeah. and stand up at the front in front of the class in Mr. Jardine's class. And I hated that. I think it was a weekly or fortnightly thing. And I just absolutely loathed it because I, I always found it very hard to learn off a, mm. a script. I still do. Um, and I, th I thought that was horrendous. Uh, I was always awful in Mr. Jardine's class at um, mental maths, you know, 20, mm -hmm. 20 mental questions, had to work out in my head. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do that, still can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can do it on the paper, but not very well mm -hmm. in my head. And I think poss possibly it was because I got very stressed about it mm -hmm. rather than actually not being able to do it. Mm. Mm. Oh, and when I was a bit older, yeah. red ink everywhere over my books because I couldn't spell. Right. Wasn't a very good primary school child, I don't think. This red ink you haunting didn't fit the system. Pardon? You didn't fit the system. I didn't fit the system, no. I couldn't do the mental maths. I couldn't, couldn't spell my mm. stories. I'd ring red ink over them all the time. And I used to dread opening the and actually that was really significant for me because mm. it was a long time before I could put pen to paper to write anything mm. when I became a uh, tutor in mm. the college and then now the university and that still haunts me. When I was yeah. 11 I was in Miss Stott's class yes. and he was a lovely man, mm. very patient, still got the red ink but mm. um, he did two things, he let us choose our own topics for research, so I did a history topic on transport and I did mm. something like the Bridgewater Canal or something really because I'm interested in bridges and right. structures and things and he let us do some science experiments mm. and that was it, science experiments, absolutely wonderful, never forgot So the that. practical stuff or, or, the, or the practical application of science absolutely. Uh, really what was the, the, the thing that grabbed you? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so um, I passed my 11 plus, right. much to my father's surprise because, um, you know, I wasn't, I think my father never had very high expectations of me, <coughs> except that he made me go to play piano lessons and gave me singing lessons, which I was rubbish at both. Mm. But I don't think he saw me as a, an academic mm. or having any sort of, so he's really worried about me going to, to grammar school. Was, it, was that a middle class family? Or no, um, essentially working class, but mm. he, um, he worked in the mill, he was a doffer in the mill, in mm. the cotton mill, and got dermatitis and so had to leave, and eventually ended up being um, a carbon salesman, carbon paper salesman. Um, we didn't have a lot of books in our house, apart mm. from big fat dictionaries. Mm. 
um, we had children, lots of children's books. I had lots of children's books, but um, I, I wouldn't say he didn't value education, but he hadn't got through to grammar school because he'd been quite ill just before the exam and yeah. hadn't done decimals or something. And um, he was really worried about me going to grammar school. But my grammar school was in Haywood. I don't know if you know about no, Haywood. No, I don't know that um, Lancashire County. You see, Rochdale was a borough. Mm. Like Halifax, I suppose, was yeah. a borough. And we lived in the Lancashire rural district, urban district. And so we had to go to the grammar school in Lancashire. So mm. we, went to, we went to Haywood. Had to go by bus. I remember the foggy days that we used to have in November. Mm supers and not being able to find their way home. Um, when I was in secondary school, first year was mixed ability, um, everybody started off equal, and uh, rows of desks, one behind the other. Um, I was taught mathematics by an absolutely fantastic woman called Mrs Todd. She really knew how to explain difficult things. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I think she was probably the best maths teacher I ever had. Mm. But, I don't know if you're not old enough to remember, probably, but there was a time when they had to have emergency trained teachers. Do you remember? I remember seeing on the bus shelters, um, oh. can you teach? No, um, could you teach? Um, as an, an advert. For the baby boom, was that? It was for the baby boom, yeah. 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 And apparently she was one of those who was recruited to the grammar school. I don't think they let her do any a lot of later uh, examination work, but she was absolutely fantastic math teacher. Mm. But sadly, when the after years, when they suddenly decided that these emergency trained teachers couldn't teach anymore, she was thrown out on her ear. I thought that was terrible. Yeah. I thought it was a tragedy yeah. when I heard about that. When I was in the second year, we were streamed. I was in the B stream. Mm. Had to do Latin for two years, which I hated. Mm. Actually, I, I looked back on that later and realised how useful learning a bit of Latin was, but I didn't realise at the time. Um, I was good at the systematical, logical stuff, but I wasn't so good at the airy fairy, creative stuff. Mm. Hated doing homework. Mm. And I always felt that teaching wasn't for me. Um, I loathed the way some subjects were taught, especially GCSE biology. Mm. I, we, we just <coughs> went into the class, the biology teacher said, open your book at... Right. Textbook. And there's so and much potential copy. there for, for, for interactive and engaging people's interest. Absolutely, and the Nuffield science was around. In fact, we were following, mm. supposed to be following the Nuffield scheme mm -hmm. when we were doing our GCEs. And um, no, he just had us, he couldn't cope, I don't think, just copying out, out, of, um, out of the book, which of course none of it for me went in because I probably wasn't that kind of a learner. Mm. And some practice in some schools, we do have, still have yeah. kids yeah. copying out of books in science. Yes. There was another really significant incident for me at my grammar school. And that was that the boy who was always top of the class in, in year two mm. was called Abba. We used to call him Abba. And when he was 15, he left school because you were able to leave school at 15 mm. if you wanted to. He was always the top of the class in the B stream. And he left school at 15 to go into a, a, a I think it was a carton making factory. Right. And he got married at 16. Um, his father not soon after and I, I, I thought that was just such a terrible loss mm -hmm. that how, how could this system mm -hmm. allow somebody like that who was so bright really to mm -hmm. fall by the wayside mm -hmm. anyway you know being academically successful is not the be all and end all of it of course it isn't but it just seemed such a waste yes. to me at the time and no I haven't tried to find out what happened no, to no, no, But no. I, I do know that that quite often happened because yeah. um, my father, for example, he succeeded in the world of business without mm. having a very good formal education. Mm. And he used to say to me, you know, there are other ways of 
of succeeding in life without, and mm. he used to say, look at my friends here, they, mm. they go to the operatic society every week and they're mm. wonderful. And, mm. uh, so I do recognise that, but, yeah. but Alan Golding has a lot of potential. Mm. So you saw it as waste potential? I saw it as total waste. Well, what brought you into teaching? I left school when I was 16. The last thing I wanted to do when I was 16 was go to teach. Yeah. So, um, because I'd been steered towards the science route in yeah. the grammar school, I wasn't allowed to do history, you know. Couldn't mm. do history and, and physics and chemistry. The timetable wouldn't allow it? No. You had to go into the arts side and do Greek yeah. and Roman literature and Latin if you went to the modern mm. side. And um, so, I thought, okay, what am I going to do? And Career advice was useless then, mm. but but they said something scientific, so I thought okay. I went to um, a company called Turner Brothers Asbestos, part of Turner and Newell, which you might have no, heard no, of. No, no, no. No, bit of that up in Yorkshire. Um, so I got a job in this place in asbestos research mm. department mm -hmm. as a laboratory assistant, and that was quite interesting because. Asbestos Research Department employed mainly men, as science mm. industries quite often did. Um, so I was I was 16, working with all these men who thought I should just make the tea, but then they gave me other things to do. I had to do quantitative titrations and things, and they gave me my own, own little project. But I also had to go down on the plant, because they'd just got a new uh, plant up and running. Um, it was supposed to be a dust free asbestos um, process, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting because on the plant the men had to do the anical, analytical analysis, yeah. well, analysis of, of all the chemicals to check that there was no burnable stuff going through into the asbestos products. Yes. That was fascinating because they quite often fiddled their results and didn't understand that actually this was important and perhaps they shouldn't. But the other thing I saw in this place was um, masses of women um, weaving asbestos blankets right. and things and uh, spinning the, the um, thread onto bobbins. And right, so, so all those textile skills from the north were being uh, applied with, 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 the, with the production of asbestos. I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Turner Brothers was was massive, huge plant in in Rochdale, and um, I suppose it was the biggest employer. But they also made um, tyres as well. Don't know who for, but it absolutely amazing. And they used to bring in, smuggle in uh, blue asbestos from uh, Rhodesia or South Africa. I think they got it from Rhodesia through South Africa. Mm. Very naughty. I used to see it piled up in the in the plants and the operators not wearing masks, having to manhandle these bales around. Yeah, I mean, this is the macho thing. Shocking. Mm. And they were allowed to do it, weren't mm. they? Nobody checked. 